because our bodies are prone to mutations, and we talked about mutations in the last video, there, there's these several kinds of mutations that you should be aware of if not memorized. So we have a point mutation, and a point mutation is when we have a single nucleotide being replaced accidentally, and we have a frame shift mutation, which is an insertion of a, a nucleotide or a series of nucleotides. It's going to cause the entire codons to be changed, and we have inversions when we have a flip of the entire genetic sequence. And we have chromosome amplification when the chromosomes are amplified, and this, this can cause translocation. Translocation is when we have a change of genetic information between chromosomes, the different chromosomes, and we have loss of heterozygosity, which is caused by transposons. And we've talked about this in detail in a, in a different video, and we came to the discussion, we came to the conclusion that you know these uh, mutations are either causing gain of function or loss of function. And this is a good thing indeed, or a bad thing. But really, our bodies are aware that this is happening. And because of this, they have developed, me they've developed mechan mechanisms to combat mutations. And we we're going to get into this right off the bat. So just to highlight real fast before we talk about any mechanisms, our bodies, when, when you know, when uh, when they're being duplicated, when cells are being duplicated, we have the G1 phase. We have the S phase where the DNA is du is, is is duplicated, is replicated. And these these phases, the the transition from these phases have have checkpoints, and these checkpoints are making sure that DNA is being replicated well, and everything else in the in the cell is being replicated properly. And and if there's any, if there are too many problems detected for for example there are too many problems detected this can trigger apoptosis it's a cell suicide just imagine that if you had too much too much to do and uh, well uh, hopefully you never reach that point if something well i shouldn't say this but if something is is going the other way around and just the body's like oh you know i can't deal with this you're gonna go sit on the sit off the golden gate bridge and just try to jump off call it's because it's too much to handle. It's apoptosis. This is what the cell is doing, essentially. And that's just an example. I'm not saying you should do that. Or don't do that, please. That's messed up. Okay, so we have a couple examples over here. We're going to talk about the direct reversal. So the direct reversal is when the mutation is, is being directly fixed. And it doesn't require any kind of repair mechanism. And this is an example of this would be uh, visible light and its impact on your DNA. So we know that UV light is causing permadine dimers to form. And if you haven't watched the, the video, you should go search it up. Um, how are mutations, well, what are mutations, I think I talked about in that video. And the, the essence of this really just is that the UV light is causing these nucleotides or these permadines to bond between one another instead of its complementary nucleotide. And because of that, there is a strange... Uh, the double strand is is kind of is kind of is kind of messed up. It's it's mutated over here, and we have a uh, we have visible light that causes this photo uses photo act photo activation to to reverse this. And plants and bacteria commonly use this uh, to repair. And if this is not repaired, this this disease this can cause melanoma. The melanoma is pretty bad, pretty bad stuff. The next thing we want to kind of highlight is homologous dependent repairs. So we know that our DNA is well, we have a complementary base pair double strand, and because of that, we can use it to to duplicate, or we can use it to as a complementary base pair, and, we, and that's pretty pretty cool. There are two kinds of of homologous dependent repairs, and the first is excision, which is repair prior to DNA replication. Before before DNA is replicated, there is a there's a quick scan if everything is fine or not, and 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 these these mechanisms are called excision. They're making sure that DNA before it replicates doesn't have any 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 mutations, and if it misses it, then it goes to, uh, of course, it's going to be trans. It's, it's sorry now it's going to be duplicated and it's going to be replicated and if it's replicated and these mutations are part of the replication process then there's a higher chance of more mutations being formed and and that's why we have post replication repairs which is which are mistakes that are not caught in repairs and we have we have mismatched pairs as well and this is something that that that, that we're going to talk about so for example we have a guanine going with an adenine and that's not that's that, that's not cool man that's just not going to form well, well it's not this, this is not how it works we have a guanine bonding with a cytosine and an adenine should be going with a thymine thymine it shouldn't be going with a with a with a guanine 
So once the mistake is identified, how do our bodies know if the guanine or the adenine is there? So think about it for a second. For a second. If we have this mismatched repair, right, or mismatched uh, nucleotide base pair over here, our bodies, as they're checking it through post replication, they ask our, they ask themselves, is it the guanine or is it the adenine that's a mistake? Which which of these is the error? And they are there. So we, let's talk about prokaryotes. How will they answer to this if they saw this mistake after replication? And the way they do it is they need to decide which one is a template. Is it either guanine or is it, should we either take guanine and just consider that guanine, guanine was from the template strand and just remove the adenine and add a cytosine to fix it? Or is it, is it the adenine, which is on the template strand and the guanine is, 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 is from, is from the mistake that's caused? So it's going to replace the guanine with thiamine or sorry, uracil. Oh, that's a mistake, the thiamine, my bad, because it's DNA replication. So the method that's used by prokaryotes is something called DNA methylation. DNA is going to be methylated when we have methylated. I can't say this word. Methylated. Methylated. Okay. DNA is methylated when when it's being when it's transcribed. So this way this way the this way we know that okay, so these methyl tags are used by the body to recognize which is the older strand. So when DNA is replicated and everything is 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 considered fine in, in prokaryotes, they're gonna add they're gonna add methyl tags. So when these methyl tags are or when these when these DNA when when DNA is replicated the next time, the methyl tags will serve as an indicator that this is the older strand. And therefore it has to be correct. And because of this this methyl methyl tag or the, the prokaryote um, uh, and enzymes can recognize that this is the mistake or the mistake is caused in the new strand so methylation why do why so prokaryotes eukaryotes don't use methylation on template strands and and i want to ask you why is this why why do you think that our bodies don't use use or eukaryotic cells don't use dna methylation and the reason is Remember that prokaryotes are have a more have ha, eukaryotes have a more sophisticated answer in comparison to prokaryotes, like through generally everything almost, and and even though prokaryotes uh, they have their own thing, so so really our our bodies eukaryotes recognize recognize a lagging strand or the, it recognize a leading strand with, with with the three prime end, and the lagging strand can be recognized right off the bat with the Okazaki fragments. So this is a mechanism where this realization is, is, is only present in eukaryotic cells and they can right off the bat tell that this is the, new, this is the template strand and this is the new strand that's being synthesized. And, and, and the template strand should be correct and, and in case of the mismatch pair, the, the new mistake that's made is, from the, is obviously not from the template strand. So here's another question to ask. Which is harder to repair, DNA single strand repairs or DNA double strand repairs? Now think about it. If we have a double, if we have a single strand break, and it's it's really not that bad because we have something called complementary base pairing, and and because it's complementary, if if there's a if there's a single strand break, let's say we have an adenine and a thymine, the adenine is gone on 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 a DNA double strand on a DNA double strand, uh, the, the body can recognize that, hey, look, this is just a thymine. A thymine will have its complementary base to be an adenine. So there you go. No problem. It's just, it's just an advantage that these mechanisms have. That's pretty good. Now, things will get a little more complicated when it's a double strand break. And when it's a double strand break, there are two possible routes. The first is homologous recombination. And this is only possible when we have uh, sister chromatin that's in the surrounding area. So there's going to be a search for sister chromatins to find uh, the the sister chromat uh, to find the sister chromatin so it can be copied off and and kind of integrated with the with the double with the, with the broken strand. And then we have the non homologous recombination, which really is at disadvantage because when the search is done and there is no chromatin sister chromatin found for the specific uh, double strand break. It has to. It has to do something to, 
to it has to somehow repair itself and it just randomly does that for a very important reason we'll just get get on that in a second so the homologous recombination happens between sister chromatids and they're used to repair double strand breaks so the phi prime of the double strand breaks is broken down to make a phi prime single strand so this is what essentially happens we have we have this is the break okay so we have a phi prime to a three prime a phi prime to a three prime this is on the same same double strand and this is the break over here so we have the before this break can be fixed what happens is 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 the 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 three prime the phi prime end is broken down and, and and this this is gonna this is gonna cause this is gonna it's gonna help us this is gonna help us the next step. And we have a lot of proteins that bind to the single strands of the double strand break. So you know if we if you get rid of these nucleotides over here, then it's important it's essential to have uh, these proteins that bind to these nucleotides to make sure they don't interact with anything else. And meanwhile these 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 uh, these proteins are bonded over here. The, the cell has the ability to, to search for the sister chromatin. Once the sister chromatin is found, the double strand break and the, the sister chromatin, the double strand break is repaired using the sister chromatin as a template. The double strand break connects to the sister chromatin. And let's focus on the recombination, not the, the, the base pairs, because the, the base pairs of these colors are just randomly done. This is not anything that's going to give you any any sense of how this is happening but what really essentially happens is let's say that we have the sister chromatin being found this is the sister chromatin uh, the, the pink color is the sister chromatin so we're gonna have dna ligase and hel helicase which are gonna you know cut open and then unbind this unbind the the sister chromatin and what's essentially gonna happen is we have some we we, we have these we have the, we have the the the, the complementary sisters we just have a exchange of, of nucleotides which help the formation of both well not the this is not a broken one the sister chromatin is gonna is gonna help the formation of the other other broken double strand but what happens if we have a non-homologous recombination and the non-homologous recombination is important because because think about it logically if we have if we leave let's say that the in this step this step over here we are not able to find anything that's that's the sister chromatid for this nucleotide over here. Then, really, if you think about it, then the entire chromatin is disconnected. The entire chromosome is dis actually is disconnected at this point over here. And that's a very, very major grave issue because they can unbind in opposite directions. And if that happens, the entire chromosome will fall apart. Therefore, they have to put something over here to make sure that these two are mended together and that's the essence behind behind non-homologous recombination is we have the same process that's happening we have a joint molecule that's formed eventually just like we we had a joint molecule form over here because some parts of these some parts of these sister chromatid are going to be going into they, they form a joint molecule to 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 make the to make this happen essentially and the same thing really happens but it's not a sister chromatin it's really just a random double strand template that's used and this is not ideal but but why does the double strand okay i've already told you this because well well let me just well you know the question over here it's just written over here and the reason we have to do it is because the chromatin has to be joined together if it's not joined together then i've said this before everything is going to unbind open that's not good